Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ergo Cast, the show where we discuss the Sahara for a sound economy. Ergo. For today's episode, we have got a little treat in store, which will be non-technical. We have two prominent faces within the Ergo space, both coming from the NFT background, who you all, you all should be slightly familiar with. We have Bowen, who releases a gnome-themed collectibles uh, line. And we also have Kareem, who's going to share more about what he does and in, delight us with uh, his work. So thank you for coming on today, guys. How are you both doing? I'm boiling here. But I'm doing well. <laughs> we'll, be do- we'll be doing better if I had a fun, but yeah, doing good. Yeah, yeah. What about yourself, Kareem? I'm okay too, but I'm too hearty. Too, too hearty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks at you. Where are you from? I'm from Egypt. You're right in the Mediterranean. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think the best way of going about this would be to try and find out the influences within your work and how your work sort of reflects you as a person and your intentions. Farron, if you'd like to just kick off for us. Yeah, for sure. I feel like my work is heavily influenced by things like Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Final Fantasy, where you get to see lots of different creatures, most of which are very much different one from another. And I feel like I tend to do the same thing with my drawings as well. So I love creating new characters and I love making each character unique in its own way. For example, by giving you know spe- specific features or a different personality from the other ones, and yeah, so whenever I draw and for Ergonom Series One, for example, we are trying to find the perfect um, balance between creativity and scalability. So obviously, I cannot draw thousands of gnomes one by one by myself. So what I'm trying to do is to draw as many as I can and to use an algorithm that doesn't affect creativity to the creativity side of it too much. So for example, if you see, if you think of projects like Cardano Beats or Spacebots, you can see thousands of um, NFTs, thousands of characters, they have the same accessories replicated, you know, through in most of them, but we want to avoid that with arguments. So our objective is to create um, lots of fun, interesting characters that everyone will be able to buy, first of all, so they need to be affordable. And second of all, something that, you know, people are going to enjoy, they're going to think it's something really unique. It's not just something that was thrown up by an algorithm. Mm. I do see a lot of uh, sort of like card-based NFTs coming onto the Ergo auction house. And, you know, just looking at them, you can see how uh, desirable they would be to add to a collection. What about yourself, Kareem? Maybe you could fill us in and what influences your work and what what you release. Okay. Uh, I'm also, I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer. So I do photography for work. I do photography in a study. I self-studying for 10 years. So I know how to do photography. So through the pandemic, we have a way back down to all the work. The facilities of the work it gained down, so we need to figure out how to market our art, how to gain our earn of living. This is important for the market, for the artists in all the world. So I, through the pandemic, I know how to do clay. So I do clay mitts. I do figures with clay. I do uh, figures that can move and can be a cartoon. I'm a comic guy, so I see everything like a page. Page is like, it's like this, 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 every story, every character, every spelling as they were talking. So I get to uh, NFTs by studying or knowing how to do this, how to read, how to gain an NFT token. So I meet and GIFs. GIF, all the story, all what I need from any influence, see my art, to have a storyline, to have a follow of the storyline, to have the scene of the storyline. I'm a cinematographer too. So 
the scene is a is a piece of art. The like a scene of two seconds. This the this only my art. I do it for fun. Taking a photo captures so much in terms of like the memory, uh, where he was at that point of the time and whatnot. Um, one thing that stands out to me is like, uh, I think it's photorealism. You know, you get the, uh, it's like a subgenre of photography. I can't say for sure myself. I'm not <laughs> adept in that area, but, but when we think about your approach to releasing NFTs, um, so you have what influences you, but what is your actual personal goal with the NFTs themselves? Is it to achieve, you know, to properly reflect that influence? Or is it just to get your art out there? Here we're talking about value of art. Value of art and value of marketplace. We mm. need to follow up with marketplace. The NFT, since uh, the last, not the last uh, months, it's have uh, one year NFT, take a one year NFT. So through this one year, the NFT market has a value way bigger. It has a value of follow up with NFTs art. It's follow up with artists as an art value. They moving as categories, as a, a value, they different from each other. How do they do the NFTs? So the, the value here, what my goal is how to inform the market with my art, how they follow with the, my storyline of characters. This only. And for yourself, Owen, is it is it purely is your is your goal purely focused around you know satisfying those collectibles you used to have an interest in and whatnot? It might sound selfish, but the first person I'm satisfying is myself because I love drawing. I love creating new characters. So I'm really satisfied with with what I'm doing and you know also the way I'm improving my my style. So if that's something that you know people are enjoying as well, then that's even better. So that's why I'm enjoying um, creating this project, managing it, and selling NFTs so much because you know it 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 allows me to really you know like share something that I love so much with lots of other people who have who also have different interests in common for example we both share the same passion for ergo for example mm. and again this this gives us the opportunity to share something else which is also the love for these characters mm. i think you uh you, you definitely hit the nail on the head there with the philosophy of satisfying your needs first over everybody else uh it, it seems like t in today's world everyone's sort of focused on uh, other people's needs but when you're actually, you know, you're, you're, you're producing your art, you have your own workflow, you mm -hmm. have your own uh, way of doing things. How does Ergo fit into all of this? Does it, does it make it easier for you? Yeah, absolutely. Ergo gives me the opportunity to sell my NFTs at a very cheap price. So minting NFTs on Ergo is embarrassingly cheap. It's so much cheaper than most other blockchains. You, you only need to pay a transaction fee and a very small fee of 0 0.11 erg, I think, every time you mint an NFT. But then you get that money back once the minting process is completed. So you're actually paying only, you're only covering the um, transaction fees, which are under one cent. So again, Ergo really, really destroys entry by barriers for NFT artists, since it allows everyone to, to market their drawings. If you compare it to Ethereum or even Polygon, you need to pay, for example, for Polygon, you need to pay a monthly fee, which is $10 fee. Whereas for Ethereum, when you are setting up your MetaMask wallet with one of the uh, marketplaces, you have to pay whatever the gas fee is, which the time I, at the time I tried doing it, uh, it was about $100. So obviously, depending on the country where you are from, and from your background and lots of other things, that can be a very high entry barrier. And also, Ergo, um, Ergo is really a great place to market to market one's NFTs because it's a very 
tight community. So there is a lot of support going on for anyone who wants to start not only an NFT, NFT project, but any kind of project. And that's something that should not be given for granted. That's not something that might happen on Cardano, for example, since the community is so big. And I noticed that most people are investing in NFTs on Cardano to just speculate on them. Like mm -hmm. as soon as they buy them, they are ready to sell them. And as an artist, that that would be heartbreaking. Like, you know, I want people to buy the NFT because they enjoy them first. And then if they see an economic opportunity to resell them at a higher price, then that's good for them. But I wouldn't want them to buy them just to resell them, which is something that I personally did when I tried um, entering the NFT scene in, no, when, when, not, not entering the NFT scene, when I tried dipping my toes into NFTs on Cardano, there was this uh, project that uh, start, that launched and I was like, okay, let's see how this all, this all works. And I bought one of their NFTs, uh, the launch dates, simply because I knew that there might be a financial opportunity to resell them, to resell it instantly. But if I was in the artist, if I was, you know, in the, mm -hmm. the people who launched those, uh, that project, I would have felt heartbroken because even though I'm making money, I'm, I'm not making money in something, I, I don't know. It, Maybe I'm over. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you on that. That's, that's how um, Kareem put it a moment ago. You know, there's more value than just the uh, the, the return, the financial side of things. Mm -hmm. There's a storyline and a journey. Um, you mentioned about Polygon, the the fee. Is that a um, is that a standard fee? Do you get that back if the auction uh, doesn't find a bidder? No, it's basically a fee you have to pay if you want to mint NFTs, if you want to sell them. So you won't be able to mint the NFTs and therefore you, you won't be able to sell them until you pay that fee, which is a monthly fee, by the way. It's not a one-time fee like uh, for OpenSea, for example. I, I think, but I think on OpenSea, it's a one-time fee when you set up your MetaMask wallet, but it's much, much higher because of gas fees. It's Again, not really fair on the artist, is it? Well, obviously they need to, to make money as well. So you can justify that price because of that. But again, since Ergo is so decentralized, they, they don't really ask for a fee. They, there, there isn't someone who's managing everything who's, you know. So mm. that really helps parties to dip their toes into NF the NFT scene and to join a project that's so promising like Argo and with such a tight and supportive community as well. Mm. And what about for you, Kareem? Because you, you are more of a photographic, you know, uh, your art's more photographic and the files themselves be quite larger uh, in size. How does integrating Ergo Utils into your workflow um, pan out? Is it, is it simple? Is there a lot of uh, time used to hash the photos? It's okay. For me, it's, Ergo is the best way for minting some art. I like how it simple the steps to make the minted so to, to make the auction, how the algorithm makes the, the transaction way, very easy, so easy to have, to bid, to mint some art, to auction a bid, to auction again for reselling, to have the token by Ergo Utilities, how you manage your tokens. Everything is so easy, so, so, so this, okay, we call it as a fee to the market flow. Every fee is the market flow. Is the fee here, it's too little. The mm -hmm. other markets, Ethereum or other coins, have a great fee. They made a flow, a minimum flow of the artist. Here, Ergo make a, a great opportunity for everyone. Is a, a is a way better to have an auction, a way to follow others, artists through the main site. You see them. The other sites is a mainstream, small, more artists. So you can see more like in the front page and other this we can see more mm. auctions every second by ha by high gas fees. They have an economic fees here besides the value of all this mm. kind we way better in ergo we have mm. a decentralized we have mm. a way
to have minted and to have auction. Mm. So, so easy. That's one of the great That's things about the Yoga Auction House is the story doesn't just end when the auction ends. They, they can be resold and it creates another, uh, it creates another community surrounding uh, that action. But so ha has your workflow changed at all from using any um, components of Ergo's environment? Is it seamless integrating Ergo? I think it didn't really impact my workflow per se, but it did really impact my my decisions. For example, when I want to auction another NFT, or I'll give you an example. For example, if in the last event that I organized with Ergnoms, the one with the king and the thief, where people uh, obtain rewards depending on um, when they bid the and on the on which NFT they bid it on, and things like that. So that's something that obviously I would have never thought of doing before on on another blockchain or on on another marketplace. But you know, on, on Ergo, I can see um, I can see the address of each person that bid that, for example. So that allows me to send the the, the right rewards to the right people at the right time. And that was obviously. This was something that obviously something that I never considered before in my workflow, but it's something that you know I I managed to add to to make the whole experience of bidding more more entertaining. But I think that's the only way it impacted my workflow because for you know for everything else I just draw something then I upload it on, I mint it on Ergo Utils I auction it on the Ergo Auction House and it's super easy super quick. Although sometimes Euro likes to act up, but apart from that, um, I have no complaints, and yeah, it's very very easy. And on the on the topic of rewards, we have really sort of seen a a, a bubble in NFTs, haven't we? We had the whole the the, the Beeple era, where one went for like sixty million dollars or something like mm. that. How do you think like this non-fungible industry is going with all of the attention it's getting from celebrities and well, normal people? Kareem, I feel like you could answer this one quite well. I think uh, the value here of art through the NFT is making a two halves and a half through a cryptocurrency and a half through the art. So the way moving of the cryptocurrency is is responsible for the nft scene so the nft is a way we expand and expand with more artists and more artists influence in creating or collecting so the nft scene i see it's not a bubble and and go away it's a and community give away through after the pandemic to earn living, to earn a, a community the art and every way in a computer, GFX and more artists every second, a way in the stories, a way of coloring, a way of every details. So we have a million of art and a million a million of million of art value. So the NFT is, can't be a bubble. So we have a community here, so we don't lose the bubble, we don't lose the community. And for yourself, uh, Farron, how do you feel about the, you know, the attention, the audience that NFTs are gaining? Are you optimistic about it? Oh, I'm very opinionated when it comes to the <laughs> NFT bubble theory. Because due to the, the low entry barriers, literally everyone can mean their NFTs and sell them. And you know, when after Space Buzz launched, you could see loads of projects popping up on Cardano, right? And even the most questionable ones were selling for very high prices, considering the work that was put behind the, the art. But people kept speculating on them, and they kept buying them. And then those people who sold those questionable NFTs, they stop producing any anymore, right? They stop after the, fir the first launch. So I think 
from now on, investors um, will want to invest on NFTs that are on projects that are there to stay, on artists that are really committed on producing something for the long run, and artists who want to not only pr produce increasingly better products, better NFTs, but also make, make them more interactive, make them more, you know, adding more features like gaming features or things like that. Like personally, if I was a customer, I would want to buy NFTs of a project that I know is it's here to stay. It's not going to disappear after one or two series. So I think um, customers are going to are going to focus on different criteria when it comes to uh, buying NFTs other than just speculating on them. They're going to want to know more about the artist behind it. They're going to want to know more about the team behind it, about the project for the future, about the effort, the artistic effort that the person is putting behind their NFTs, because you can find lots of projects that are selling, for example, the same design, the same drawing, but just with different colors, for example. And, you know, if you're charging a high price for that, you're just speculating on people who are speculating on your NFTs and who want to sell them at a higher price because objectively there is a much artistic artistic I don't know, artistic effort behind it and if I was a customer I would want to reward that I want to pay for that for the artistic effort behind the NFT not just its speculative potential so I think in, in, NFT customers are going to become more and more educated on that and are going to choose the right criteria when it comes to investing on NFTs in the future. And that's obviously going to weed out all the most boring and laziest and uh, laziest project, uh, projects out there. So even though it feels like we are in a bubble phase right now, it, it's just because of the low entry barriers. But in the future, I think, as, again, as I said, investors will be more wise when it comes to choosing the NFT projects they want to invest on. Mm. I'm all for, you know, this low barrier to entry. I mean, there's nothing you can really do about it, let's be honest. And does this have an effect, a collateral effect on the art industry? So if we look at people's work, I'm just picking names here, mm. it, it really carries its own theme with it. It's, it's very peculiar and it's not something that I would expect to normally see um, out there selling at a, a real physical auction. And I guess the the same can't really be said for music because music does have this, um, you know, there's there's laws to music, there's scales, there's rules that you follow. Uh, when we talk about real art, you know, graphical, it, it's free. You know, you, mm -hmm. you go ham, you do whatever you like. Do you think that this uh, NFT movement is benefiting the art industry in terms of creativity and, and everything? I think it's benefiting smaller artists. I'm not sure about... Mm more popular ones, but again, because of the low entry barriers, small artists to sell their products and to save on shipping costs, for example, because the alternative would have been to sell prints, for example. But when it comes to, as you said, as you mentioned, um, copyright laws for music, for example, when it comes to NFTs, obviously what you're paying for is the ownership of the NFT. So you want to make sure that your NFT comes from the right person, it's an original one. So obviously anyone could mean any NFTs they come across. So I think it's the in the artist's best interest to make sure that they they warn customers about you know how to make sure that you're buying the right one. You want to, for example, one way to do that to do it would be to make the address you mean your NFTs with public, like others are doing, or you know, even even Charles Hoskinson has got like his public key on his Twitter, uh, Twitter bio. So that can be a way of, of doing, doing that. But again, I think only artists who are really committed to it and who therefore it, want their customers to make sure that, you know, they want to educate customers to, um, about all of this. Because although it might seem like it's a wild industry without any laws, unlike the music industry, it's, again, it's in the artist's best interest to put those authenticity boundaries and educate customers about them. So in terms of the state of, you know, art itself, you know, the, the art movement, you, you, you generally think it's quite healthy for it? Well, as long as, you know, there are people who are making money only mm. in, a, in a healthy and 
right way. I think it's it, it's amazing. I, I mean, again, as I said before, personally, another, if I didn't know about NFTs, I would be selling my my art as like prints on websites like Redbubble, for example. And you know, it would be a lot of work, a lot of more work, because obviously you need you need to produce something physical and to sell it to someone else, and there are shipping costs involved. So you know, there are lots of things to consider. So I'm not ruling out the possibility of selling, you know, material um, merchandise of Agnoms. But for now, being able to raise money by selling digital drawings, by selling NFTs, is a blessing for for smaller mm. artists. Mm. I think so. Yeah. To answer your question, yeah, I think it benefits a lot smaller more smaller artists. Mm. Kareem, you're a man of value. What's your view on the effects of NFTs? Uh, on the art movement, you know, the uh, the metaverse of art. Okay, uh, here uh, I see is a great potential for every artist. It's not a great potential for an, any artist. It's for a small art to see how their work be seen in a market, how to to sell or buy or collect other things how they value the flow in the art and seeing more. So Twitter, through, through uh, Discord, they love the community, they love the way they, be, they, they have. Other than this, after you can, and I'm so sorry, uh, it's before this, we call stock photo, we call and markets, it's way, hard to buy to sell your artwork it's need to be a promote your art need to be a physical for to be sent and other things here we have a great potential for small artists to be in an environmental way way better we have a community of artists besides them a community they way need how you build this how you need some more to build the others, how you can build your own project, how you can customize your characters. Like here, here we say a great bit of a chance for artists to make arts flow, to be seen, to be living. I see money, yeah, yeah, everything for money, but it's not money for living. It's an easy way for living after the pandemic. We all be at the best. All the artists, all the world, we more the best by no work, no art flow, no market they see, no community they feel how the art encourage others, how, how audience be feeling of your art. Every this, all of this. Through NFT, we can see it, we can feel it, we can have a community and a society talking and every movement of art, of your own art. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me personally, you know, just, just leaving it to nature, you know, just to progress, um, just letting it be free and develop how it's meant to go is probably the best way to go about things. Uh, rather than be propentious, uh, cautious to how things might evolve. So I'm going to just chuck a couple of curveball questions at you to end today's show. Mm -hmm. I'll start off with you, Kareem, again, as we had you last. Single-handedly, what is your most favorite feature of Ergo Auction House? The most favorite is the easiest transaction, the easiest of the auction feed and the auction build. Mm. This is the best way. I see a more platforms or more uh, blockchains like Ethereum or like Doge. It's a way hard to be minted or to build an auction. You hear so me? it's just the whole plugin of Euroy into the uh, the web interface. That being so easy for you to do is probably you know your favorite feature. You'd say. And what about you, folks? Yeah. Mm, I like the fact that, you know, users can actually, um, they can sort NFTs by 
you know, lowest remaining time, lowest price, highest price, things yeah. like that. Because at the moment we don't have a section that kind of like highlights, for example, the uh, latest minted works or, or things like that. Yeah. So that kind of helps with that. And yeah, oh, I also like the auto extend feature because that allows NFTs to go into like price discovery and understand you know, how much people are willing to pay for a specific NFT. That really helps the artist understand on the marketing side of it, you know, what kind of character he, you want to focus more or, you know, what kind of events or things like that you want to do more. So on the marketing side, that's extremely useful. And to add a bit more substance to that first question, what do you think, what feature, what additional feature do you think would amplify the marketplace's usage? We need artist profiles. We need something okay. that allows customers to know who they are buying from, not only who they buy from, but also if they click on the artist profile, for example, they can see what other works they have up for auction. Like there are so many things that can be done to improve user experience, but this one in particular is not only gonna help customers to you know save their favorite artists and things like that, but it's also going to help artists themselves to um, in, to build their brand image because without that, they won't be able to survive in the long run. Mm. So that will help a lot, and that's mm. something that you know can be stolen from lots of other NFT marketplaces out there. And oh, there there are so many suggestions. For example, when someone mm. uh, auction, auctions a new NFT, for example, you can make it pop up. Um, in the space, in the empty space between the top of the page and where the first of, the first NFTs are shown on the auction house, and also we need to get rid of the Yoroi wallet um, tab when someone tries to connect the wallet because if you click on it, it says that Yoroi wallet is not supported yet. Okay. So I noticed that lots of people who wanted to place bids, they just gave up on it because when they clicked on connect wallet and then Yoroi wallet tab. It just said, oh, no, you, you, you got away for it. So they were like, do we do we have to run a full node to bid on NFTs? Or, mm -hmm. But no, they just need to click on the any wallet tab and paste their wallet address there. But obviously, as a Yoroi wallet user, if I see the Yoroi tab, then I'm just going to click on it. And if it tells mm -hmm. me that I cannot bid on it because I don't have, because Yoroi wallet is not supported, then I'm just going to give up. Mm -hmm. So I think that's you know one of the most basic things that can be done to allow customers to use the auction house more confidently, for example. I'm sure Anon will be watching this episode with a notepad anyway, so I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> and for yourself, Kareem, if, if you had a choice of uh, one feature being added to Ergo Auction House, what would it be? The same features mm. I need to provide for artists. Every artist need to be more full up with, with collectors how they show, how they show that, how art be in a value of art here with a profile, with a, a mini auctions, a story of auction before and a, a story of auction after. We need a profile for everyone to show the follow up of the world. So the creator made an, op an optimistic so the follow of the art. So they need customers have follow up with creator. So mm -hmm. the main thing I like the profile and about Euro, uh, I totally agree with you. Is your can't work? I I don't know the, this error, but the profile it made a way better of the platform. Mm. So what I'm feeling from that is we just need to get some glue in there. You know what I mean? Thinking mm. abstractly. And if, if any uh, newcomers to Ergo do have any sort of misconvenience, don't fret to come into the uh, community NFT channel or even into the Ergo platform Telegram channel. Everyone's willing to help uh, one another. I'd like to say thank you guys for coming on today. You have been fantastic. You've um, it, It's really been great to sort of get into the deep end from uh, you know an artist's perspective with Ergo Auction House and inside the environment. And 
for those of you watching, just to sort of give you an update on uh, ErgoCast, everything that's been released so far, we're going to categorize as season one. Um, and starting from the next episode, we're going to turn a new leaf and call it season two. Moving forward, there will possibly be the appearance of just myself hosting. Rob is currently venturing on a new project called D Labs. But not to fear, I will be dragging them back on at some point. And to top it off, thank you for watching. Take care. Thanks for having us. Thanks for guys.